What's going on YouTube? Today we're doing OS Query, the basics. Um, it's going to be an introduction on how to use OS Query. So basically OS Query is a tool that can be used to analyze the operating system. So basically you can have a visibility on the processes, the network connections, um, the registry, keys, so on and so forth. You can use OS Query mainly to um, investigate cyber security incidents or uh, infected machines OS Query can be installed on Windows and Linux um, in this video we're going to provide an introduction um, on how to use OS Query and we're going to give an example on this using this room at the end there is a challenge we're going to go over the challenge as well so one thing to know about OS Query is that it uses SQL so basically, it turns a operating system into a relational database where you will be uh, able to query the processes and networks, etc. using SQL queries. So we're giving this machine, we're giving this machine here, let's um, make the font bigger. Okay, so we can start OS query by typing OS query I. We can start the interactive mode in OS Query. So it's for if it's the first time you use OS Query, it's tremendously important to understand how to use the command. So every command in OS Query is prefixed with a dot. So all the commands are prefixed with a dot. You're going to use the dot. We're going to start your command with a dot. And then we can type the command we want to use. For example, I want to see the help menu. I can type dot help. And here I can see a list of all of the available commands I can use on OS Query. For example, all dot all, select all from a table. Uh, as you can see, all of the commands are prefixed with dot. So don't forget to use dot in the commands. That's the first thing to know about OS Query. The next thing to know is that OS Query has a documentation page here. I'm going to put the link of this page in the video description. As you can see here, we have a documentation and for every version of OS Query, we have different tables. As you can see for version 503 or version, let's say 551, we have 274 tables. Okay, And here we have, as you can see, this is the list of all the tables. Now, what do these tables represent? These tables represent different aspects of Windows operating system. For example, if we take a look at um, battery. So the battery table provides information about the internal battery of a MacBook. So what's going to happen here is that we are going to query these tables and reveal the content of the columns. For every table, as you can see, we have columns. Columns store values. For example, account policy data. This table, additional Mac OS user account data from the account policy section of the open directory. We can query this table using OS query and we can repeat the contents of every column. UID, creation time, failed login count. That's an example. Now, you can also filter by the operating system. If you are investigating a Windows machine, you can filter using the, the platform table here and select Windows. As you can see, this narrows down the number of tables shown here on the left. We have 106 tables. Um, an example, if we click on CPU info, we can see the description of the table, retrieve CPU hardware info of the machine, and we see here the available columns. And of course, when we apply or when we query this table using OS query here, we're going to find out all of the available columns and the values. So it works based on querying the table, guys. So let's go here. Um, for example, we want to see the list of all of the available tables. Okay, we can type the table. And as you can see here, we can see all of the available tables that we can query in this instance. Okay. Okay. Now, if we are interested in specific table or before uh, being interested in a specific table, let's say we want to search um, for the available tables which contain the word user so a table and then I can type the word user what's going to happen here the it's going to return 
all of the tables that contain the user or the word user in its name. Let's try. Okay, as you can see, it has returned a list of the tables, okay, that contain the, the word user. This is useful if you want to search through the tables for a specific word or string. Okay, now the next thing, after we have listed the available tables, we want to find out what are the columns that are contained in each table. Now, every table contains columns. That's the concept of relational databases. So we can use dot schema and then the table name to query the columns inside the table without revealing the value, of course. We are actually enumerating okay the tables and the columns inside the table so after enough enumeration after understanding the structure of every table we can then query the values of the columns so dot schema and the name of the table say users all right as you can see here is the structure of the table okay now to find out the columns the columns the column name or the columns name start here the first column name is uid this is the type it's big integer and then we have the next column, GID, its tab is big integer. And then we have UID signed, GID signed, username, text, description, that's also a column. The other one is directory. As you can see, you can be able to um, uh, distinguish between the, uh, or find out the column names based on the structure. The column name, and the type column name type column name type no column name type and here you can take a note that the primary key in this table is the uid so the next step is to display the contents of the columns for example say i'm interested in the username column and the description column so what I can do here, I can say select user name and the other one was description from the name of the table is users. As you can see, I have displayed the usernames available on this machine along with the description of every user. Administrator, artist, James, creative artist, network share, network servers, local service. So in a nutshell, that's how OS query works. That's the basic foundation of working with OS query tables, columns, schema, and then to be able to reveal the contents, you have to use SQL queries. Okay. Now, before doing, before going to the notes section, this is the, the list of the uh, notes I have prepared for OS query. We're going to need them while we uh, solve the challenge. So never mind now. Let's go and answer the questions. How many questions we have here? Okay. How many tables are returned when query table process in the interactive mode of OS query? So here we have to issue this query table process dot table. Technically here we are looking or searching through the available tables for the ones that contain the word process and see how many of them we have. So we have three, and this is the answer for this question. Looking at the schema of the processes table. Okay, so dot schema processes. Okay, there we have it. Which column displays the process ID for the particular process? Let's look for that column. The column that displays the process ID, it's clear guys, that is the PID. So the PID column is the column that displays the process PID. Examine the dot help command. How many output display modes are available for the dot mode command? So dot help. And here we can select the output mode. We have one, two, three, four, five. Five ones. Okay, schema documentation. This is related to the ability of navigating the documentation. So the first question is, in OS query version 551, how many common tables are returned when we select both Linux and Windows? So 551, Windows and Linux, we have 56 tables. 
no screedy version 551 how many tables for mac os are available so we have to go to the filter cancel linux windows uncheck these and check mac os we have 180 tables in the windows operating system which table is used to display the installed programs okay we can go back here so we want to find out the table that displays program we have to search for this so the table and type program for example it will return all of the tables that contain the word program in this case it was programs in windows operating system in which column contains which column contains the registry value within the registry table which column contains the registry value within the registry table so we have to look up the registry table let's first search for the registry table so we have one so let's query the schema of this table so we have the key column we have the path the name the type the data m time and the primary key is key so the question here which column contains the registry value so here we have the key itself this is the path of the key the name of the key and here the type of the key and here we have data okay it's very clear indication that the data column contains the registry value next using OS query how many programs are installed on this host so we want to find out the number of programs here so we learned that the table that contains the list of the available programs was programs table in the scenario here we want to find out how many programs so a backward method is to just type table programs okay and here as you can see if we type schema programs we can see here the name the, the version so what we can do we can uh, select display all of the available um, data here so we're interested in counting the programs of course this is a backward method it doesn't work but you can do it as a starter select um, name from programs in here you display all of the available programs and installed so count them you will find out it is 19 but another method a more advanced method use useful method is to use the count so we can use select count so count asterisk will count all of the entries or the columns inside a table uh, sorry the uh, entries so basically select count from programs we have 19 this is the answer using os query what's the description for the user james so here we want to tackle down the users table display the schema so we want to find a description here description and username so select we did this actually before select username description from users what happened description no such table i made a typo here so james the description of james is creative artist now when we run the following search query this one what is the internet explorer browser extension installed on this machine okay so what's this query here select asterisk from ie extension so basically we are retrieving all of the information all of the data the values contained in the table ie extensions so let's do that not copying so what's the browser extension installed on this machine let's find out 
Microsoft URL search hook C Windows System32 IE frame DLL so you copy the full path and you end up with the extension after running the following query what's the full name of the program return that's the query let's go over the query guys nope that's the old one let's copy two times okay so select name and stone location from programs so the table we are interested in this time is programs and of course the columns for which we want to display the values were name and install location so display the name and the install location of every program from the programs table and here we have a condition now where is actually is a statement used in sql to uh, um, put some sort of condition so basically the condition here is that the name column like wireshark what does it mean it's like saying if display the name and then install location for programs if or when the name okay of a program is exactly wireshark so the two percentages here we have indicate that we want the two percentages before and at the first at the very first of the word and at the very end of the word as you can see when i put the word between two percentages it means i want to display exactly i want to look for exactly this word or the program name or the program whose name is exactly wireshark matches exactly wireshark if i remove the percentage from here what's going to happen it's going to look for all the programs where the name of the program starts with Wireshark. Sorry, end with Wireshark. If I remove this one from here and keep the, uh, the, the prefix here, or the one on the left, it's going to look for all the programs where the name starts with Wireshark. If I keep this here and remove this here, it's going to look for the programs whose, the name, whose name ends with Wireshark. So that's the uh, explanation of the percentages here and like is used actually to match a string so when we enter this it's going to return the programs or the list of programs whose name exactly equal wireshark so enter as you can see it has returned one result as you can see the name wireshark it contains wireshark and also contained in the Wireshark as in the install location as well. So as long as the word Wireshark is contained within the name, um, it displays the value here, the name and the install location. So the answer for this question is Wireshark 36864-bit. Let's now step to the challenge. Which table stores the evidence of process execution in Windows OS? That one was kind of tough. So. To find the answer guys you have to find the responsible table of displaying the evidence of process execution for that you have to do the documentation if you scroll the way down there's a table named user as assist let's see here where is that table ah this is mac windows so user assist here description as with the description user assist registry key tracks when a user executes an application from windows explorer so this is the windows explorer here as you can see guys okay and whenever i execute an application from here the process execution event or the details of the event will be stored under this table specifically it will display the path of the application executed the last execution time and the number of times the application was executed so that's the answer for this question one of the users seems to have executed a program to remove traces from the disk what's the name of the program so since we are tracking the programs that the user has executed let's now query the user assist table so dot schema user assist so we have the path we have the last execution time and we have count and SID. 
let's find out so select everything from user assist okay so these are the programs the path to every program many programs right so to find out the question here is to find out what was the program uh, that has been executed to remove traces from the disk okay let's find out so the first program was snipping tool not this one paint notepad cmd could be cmd but it's not the cmd actually but it can be a potential um, also we have chrome setup nope google update nope google update nope and we have here powershell nope msi execution no always query no system properties advanced wireshark npcap proton vpn disk wipe that one is interesting and it's very clear it's the application that has been executed to remove traces from the disk so that's the answer next one create a search query to identify the vpn and installed on this host what's the name of the software okay so i know you can find the answer from here exactly but that is not the objective of the question the question was meant or the answer was meant to be found by using a search query a new search query different than this one so we're going to look up the programs table okay so again schema programs and we're going to search for the word vpn so what's going to happen here select name from Programs. I'm querying the column name here, the name column, since the name column displays the name of the core program I installed. The condition here is that where, okay, name like, and here we have to use two single quotes, two percentages, and the word VPN. I want to display all the programs where the name contain the word VPN. Let's find out. Proton VPN. VPN, they are all the same. It's Proton VPN. So that's the answer. How many services are running on this host? So it is the services table. So select count from services. We have 214 services. A table auto execute contains the list of the executables that are automatically executed on a target machine. It means the executables that are that are started when the system boots up. There seems to be a batch file that runs automatically. What's the name of the batch file? Okay, let's find out or let's understand the structure of this table. Schema auto execute. So we have the path of the program, the text. Uh, path name source so what to find a bat file so what we're going to do we're going to create the path and the name and use the where condition here so select path name where name like so As you can see here, there seems to be a batch file. A batch file is a batch file that ends with the bat extension. So the where statement here is going to be like this. It's going to end with dot bat. So we're going to use percentage dot bat. Here, we're going to display all of the uh, programs where the name ends with dot bat. Let's see if it will work. No such column path. How come? Path and name. Okay. How about this? 
No such column name. Oh, we forgot to specify a table from auto execute. What's going on? Auto exec. Yes, I am doing a lot of typos today. Let's see. Let's see what are the programs whose name end with dot bat. Seems like it's gonna take a lot of time. The other question was, what's the full path of the batch file found in the above question? So basically, once we find the program name, we'll be able to find the path immediately since we included the path column here as part of the query. So we have two, batch startup and batch startup. Technically, they are both the same, but which one is the correct path, you guess? They are both, actually, as you can see, one under program data and the other one is under James. So basically, that's the name of the program. And the other question is asking the path. This is the correct path since it's configured to run under the user James. So that was it, guys. I hope you liked this video and if you want more technical notes about OS query you can find them in the notes uh, section of course after you subscribe to the second tier of the channel membership so that was for today I hope you like this and I'm going to see you later فينا مثل سرم البقر لا مع الزلت مسلوق